Hi everyone! So lately I've been finding myself frustrated with this watercolor issue that I've been having. If you haven't come across my channel before, I tend to paint in one or two layers and that's it. I achieve darker values by using colors with darker tones or charging with lots of paint. But more recently, I've been interested in building values or mixing colors by layering light washes of color, also known as glazing. My frustration comes from having to wait for paint to fully dry and sometimes coming back to what I was working on only to find that I'm no longer interested in it. But I finally found a solution! Alcohol markers specifically pastel tone alcohol markers to mimic diluted watercolor. I really, really want to show you how I've been experimenting with these and hopefully you'll see how such a product could be helpful with color studies that could translate into watercolor applications. In today's demonstrations, I'll be using these Ohuhu Honolulu alcohol markers, which are dual tipped. One side is a regular chisel tip and the other a brush tip. I have here the pastel set of 48 called Blossoming and their basic 24 color set. This first piece is my first ever attempt with alcohol markers, drawing Thailand's well-renowned James Bond Island. And for this one, I wanted to demonstrate for you how I would normally approach painting or coloring a piece of artwork by starting with lighter tones to block out certain areas of colors. You'll see me struggling with the sky and the ocean as I really didn't know how to approach coloring such large areas of paper with a dry medium like this. But I persisted and continued either way. As I progressed, I started using some mid-tone colors and experimented with layering the lighter tones. But ultimately, I wasn't getting the value differences I wanted, so I started grabbing much darker tones to complete the piece. I don't particularly like how this turned out, but as I said, I wanted to first demonstrate how I normally would approach painting artwork. And now, what I think is the epitome of these pastel tone markers is simulating watercolor glazing. Before I show you how I apply that to an actual piece of art, I wanted to quickly show this to you. I picked these four colors to demonstrate that even with pastel tones, you can really build up darker values. However, it seems like I was only able to get up to six or seven layers before plateauing. Even then, there's still a distinguishable value difference between the first and last swatch sections, especially with Pigeon Blue. And now, time for the actual demo. This is a historical site called Wien Kum Gam, located in northern Thailand. I pre-sketched the outlines using the rainbow-colored pencil I featured in a video long ago. For this whole piece, I used colors only from the Ohuhu Pastel Blossoming set. I found that the chisel tip is great for covering large areas quickly and blocking in colors. You can see that even though I'm using different colors here and there, I'm continually layering these pastel tones over one another. For a brick-like texture, I simply dabbed the brush tip onto the surface of the paper like so. While the chisel tip is great for covering large areas, the brush tip is great for details or for a more controlled application. I used the same blue of the sky to color in the last layer of the steps on the bottom as well as the darkest shadows of the monument. It's not as dark as a solid black, but it really gives that darker value that the piece was missing. In a perfect world, I'd go in some more with some darker colors from the Ohuhu basic set of 24 to add some more definition and contrast to this piece. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm happy with just stopping here as I'm already amazed with how much just the pastel set alone can create. After that, I was really feeling happy with the marker's potential, 
so I whipped out this beautiful line art of Sakura from Card Captor Sakura. My friend had drawn this for me a long time ago with the sole purpose for me to color or paint it, but I just never got around to it because, well, I was afraid I'd mess it up. But I think I'm ready now. I chose some colors to limit myself and slowly took my time coloring it in. This made me realize how valuable the brush tip really is. It's able to color in even the smallest corners. I'm quite happy with all three results today. I think these alcohol markers would be a great way for those of you who want to experiment with glazing in watercolor but don't have the appropriate circumstances to wait for the paint to dry like me. If you've seen these Ohuhu markers before, then you might not need to continue watching, but for those of you who haven't heard of these yet, please allow me to show you some cool things I experienced while making this video. First of all, both marker sets came with a foam-like padding which helps protect the markers during shipping. Each set also came with a flexible plastic sheet to put between paper pages for protection from bleed-throughs, pre-printed swatch cards, and a little pamphlet with extra info. The colors in this pastel blossoming set are definitely light in tone. There's a beautiful selection of each color group, though I find that there are too many greens for my own preference. I believe Ohuhu has another pastel set of 48 colors, so if you just want one of the sets, make sure to have a look at the colors in both sets before making up your mind. The marker pad sketchbook is spiral bound, 200 GSM paper, with perforated sheets in case you need to rip out any pages. The paper itself is bright white and smooth. On this note, I'd like to suggest that when you swatch the colors out, prepare other papers as well because I find that paper really affects how the colors look. Whether it's bright white, off-white, smooth, or textured, everything matters. It also came with the same flexible plastic sheet to protect from bleed-throughs. Now I noticed with the piece that I only used pastel tones, there wasn't any bleed-throughs at all, just ghosting. However, I also tested with just a black color to see how many layers it would take before bleeding starts. The answer is 5 layers. That shows us that it's not really about the number of layers, but the saturation of a color as well. Before I end this video, I wanted to quickly thank Ohuhu for sending me these products to try. This is my first ever set of alcohol markers, so I honestly can't comment on quality comparison with other brands. But from my experience thus far, I'm just in love with how easy it is to use, and how transferable the glazing technique is towards watercolor application. And while I've heard about alcohol markers having a strong smell, due to the alcohol of course, these ones weren't that bad. Additionally, I recently saw Jazz's head-to-head -head marker fight, I'll link that below, and these Ohuhu markers was ranked second place. It's basically equivalent to Copics. Anyway, Ohuhu are constantly looking to improve and expand, so if any of you are in Thailand and interested in retailing or wholesaling Ohuhu markers, you can contact them directly at business at ohuhu.com. Well, that's all I have for you today. Let me know down below if you'd like to see any of my color studies with these markers, and maybe I could show you in a separate video for that. As always, thank you so much for watching everyone, don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated.